My name's Neil White. I work as a principal engineer for Altran Praxis. And more significantly from our, our perspective today, uh, I'm the engineering manager for, for the iFlex program. In the context of today in a wide scale, Praxis uh, obviously brings uh, a long history of formal methods from its UK base um, and, a, and a long history of agile methods from its, from its French organisation, which, which is great from today's perspective. So in 30 minutes, I can deal with one topic in depth or I can go for a, uh, for a sprint across a number of topics. Uh, I'm, not, I'm, uh, I'm going to go for the latter, mainly to ward off the effects of, of lunch. Um, stop everybody snoozing in front of me. I can see a few. I've got, I've got my eye on a couple of people already. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to talk generally about, about the IFAX project, give you some context. Then I'm going to talk about the formal methods that we use throughout the life cycle of IFAX. Okay? Give you a little bit of a personal opinion on the pros and cons of the formal methods as, as we've used them. Um, I ought to confess up front, uh, I'm a long-term formalist. Okay? I have a passion for mathematics and rigour. Um, but I also like success and project delivery. Um, and in particular, profitable project delivery. Okay? So formal methods really have to work for me in an industrial context. So the IFX program is being procured by NATS, which is the UK's uh, air traffic control service provider. NATS has a long history of, of innovation in air traffic control, partly through necessity. Uh, the UK geographically sits in a very busy area underneath the transatlantic air, airflow patterns, and we're a very populous island. Okay? I can only scratch the surface of the IFX project in, in 30 minutes, um, but there's plenty more on their website. So, UK air traffic control. To control air traffic across the UK, what we do is we divide the airspace into something we call sectors. Okay. Basic gist being, if we if we control every sector, okay, then we've effectively controlled aircraft across the whole airspace. Each sector has a team of three air traffic controllers working it. Okay, you have a planner. Uh, this chap. Okay. He arranges for aircraft to come into their sector. Okay, uh, and he arranges them to be handed off to the next sector. So the arrangements include height, speed, um, headings, that kind of thing. Okay? So he's ultimately responsible for the boundary of the sector around the edge, the ins and outs around the edge. The tactical controller lady, is actually talking to the aircraft. Okay? She's the one issuing climb, descend, move left, move left now, no really now kind of instructions to the aircraft. Okay? Um, and she's basically responsible for getting from the, the inbound edge of their sector to the outbound edge of their sector, uh, avoiding everybody else. Okay, she deals with the interior, basically. Um, and the third person is an assistant, who's very busy there. Um, she supports both the tax school and the uh, planning controllers. Uh, she prints paper strips and generally helps out. So you can just about see, these things here are paper strips. So every aircraft that goes through the sector has a paper strip that says what the aircraft is, where it's coming from, where it's going to, any agreements that have already been made, um, uh, uh, flight plans, that kind of thing. Okay, so that's today. Okay. Why do we need IFAX? Well, increased capacity in air traffic, which is what we always want. Okay, more and more people are flying, even at the moment. Uh, capacity is uh, the traffic's going up. We need more capacity. Traditionally, you increase capacity in air traffic using more sectors. Okay, so you have a large number of smaller sectors. The more sectors you have, the more teams of three you can deploy. The more people you have controlling the aircraft flying through the airspace. Okay, pretty simple. Um, except we've got a problem. Okay we've hit basically the largest number of sectors we can have. Okay, we start putting in more sectors now, and the, uh, the cost of handing aircraft between sectors becomes dominant. So instead of handing more traffic, actually we have more work for the same amount of traffic. And that's where IFAX comes in. Okay? IFAX is a set of tools that is, enabled, uh, is designed to provide higher capability for the existing sectors. Okay. So exactly what is IFAX? Well, the first thing we do is, uh, is we replace those paper flight strips with electronic flight strips. Okay? To be honest, this is not the greatest challenge in computer science today. Okay? It is, to be fair, it's a big challenge to the air traffic controllers. If you imagine you spent your life controlling aircraft with a piece of paper and a file and <laughs> ticking and marking, okay? to move to electronic flight strips, even though they look the same, where you now need to click or type, is a big user change. Okay? It's n definitely not to be underestimated the impact this has on the controllers. But from a pure computer science point of view, pretty much a solved problem. Why do we do it? We do it because it's an enabler. Okay? Once we've got all that lovely data that is currently on paper into our computer system, okay, then we can use that data to do some, some, some clever and sexy things. In particular, we create a trajectory for every flight. Okay? So we, create, we, we, uh, we model its route through 
through time and space of what we think this flight's going to do. For each trajectory, we had what we call our uncertainty. Okay? So we effectively add a cone that follows the trajectory, which is our uncertainty, where the aircraft might be. Okay? The closer to the point now you are, the smaller the uncertainty, obviously. As you go down the timeline, the uncertainty grows. Some manoeuvres the aircraft might do, climbing, descending, increase that uncertainty more than just the, by the time. Some actually decrease it. There are some manoeuvres that are particularly accurate, and you can bring the uncertainty back in. So once we've got trajectories and uncertainty, we can start doing things like comparing those trajectories and comparing those uncertainties, and looking for uh, possible conflicts in flight plans, anything up to 15 minutes in advance. Currently, controllers work with a much shorter look ahead of a couple of minutes, so moving this out to 15 minutes is one of the key enablers in giving them more, more flexibility. On top of this, we build up a what-if capability. Okay? We build in the ability for the controllers to suggest or say to the computer, I might give that aircraft this instruction. What will happen? Okay? And we can look at what will happen to the trajectories. We can look at what will happen to all the trajectories of the other aircraft. And if the controller sees their screen light up red, they know maybe they want to think about a different instruction. Critically, though, that now they can do that by doing the what-if functionality before they issue that instruction to the aircraft. Okay? So it avoids us getting aircraft into, into tricky places in the first place. So as you can see, we're basically augmenting rather than, uh, rather than replacing the existing air traffic control system. IFAX is a set of tools that sits alongside the system. Customer describes it as the, as the, uh, the biggest advance in air traffic control since the introduction of radar. Okay? Which I have to admit, when I started the project, I thought was a really pithy marketing quote. Okay? Now I've been doing engineering on this project for five years, it is absolutely true. Okay. Okay. So picture, picture's always good. This is part of our HMI. Okay. Every symbol you see here is a pair of aircraft. Okay. And what that indicates is uh, along the bottom, time, and along the vertical axis, separation. And the symbol indicates how close this pair of aircraft will get. Okay. This is the closest point of approach and how long it's going to be. Okay. So uh, if we pick this one. In about 11 minutes, it's going to be four and a half miles apart, okay? which is just below our legal threshold of five miles. Okay? It doesn't tell you anything about where the aircraft are now. It just tells you about the closest they will come on their current trajectories. Uh, there's various sort of extra detail encoded. The shape of the symbol tells you about the, the attitude of the conflict. So the one that looks a bit like a bow tie, are two aircraft flying towards each other. Uh, two arrows following it is one aircraft following another one. Okay? So again, two aircraft flying towards each other might be a very long way away now, but they're closing rapidly. An aircraft catching up another one will actually, if the closest point of approach is, uh, there's one, this one, if the closest point of approach is five miles, um, actually they might only be 5.2 miles apart now, but it's going to take a very long time to close up. Okay? Um, the colours again indicate, indicate importance. Uh, one thing that isn't on that diagram, there are no white ones, white ones are very, white interactions are very important. Okay? This, this, this diagram in, in red and green is about what the aircraft should be doing on our predictions. Okay? We also monitor what the aircraft actually does against reality using the radar return. Okay? It's very important. Okay? It's absolutely no point showing you interactions between where air aircraft should be in the air. It's very important that we show where interactions are where aircraft really are in the air. So actually for each aircraft, we've got a trajectory of where it should be if it had followed all of its instructions properly. Okay? And we plot a trajectory of where the aircraft actually is for any corners it's cut. Okay? Okay, so let's let's move into uh, into the formal methods bit a little bit. The IFAX specification is large and it covers a couple of technologies. The dominant part is a formal Z specification, okay, by far the dominant part, and I'll give you some numbers later. Um, we have some inherited mathematics. It's not in Z, but it's written in mathematics. In particular, this covers the the detailed algorithms for uh, producing trajectories, which are the output of a, a long running NATS research project. We could rewrite these in Z. Okay, we could take all the maths we've got, we could, we could encode it in Z and include it in the formal specification, um, but to be honest, we don't. Okay? Uh, to do so would cost us time and money. Um, all we'd do is in, add defects <laughs> in, in, in translating it. Uh, it's already un unambiguous, it's maths, so we leave it exactly as it is, we just tie it into the Z. Uh, Nature my specification in state tables, um, and, and honesty compels me to, uh, to acknowledge that we have a little bit of uh, English language as well particularly non-functional requirements, performance requirements, um, thou shalt only use 48% of the processor, that kind of thing, um, but a very, very little amount. Um, 